Hey guys, Barry and PA Brew News. Painting with PA Brew News. Here we go. Was it episode, what was it? Hmm, 24? 24, 25? Something like that. Oh, I just can't remember. But it's four in the morning. Might as well do something. Got some stuff here going on. I have my standard 18 by 24 inch canvas, black gesso, just all around here, let it dry. Put a thin coat of oil over the everything and a little bit of liquid clear here. I put a coating of a crimson and sap green mixture, gives you a kind of a, like a reddish brown and covered all this. And then when I put the liquid, the white on, you can see it kind of picked up a little bit of the hue from the reddish brown. Now we're gonna just throw some stuff on and see what happens. Because you know I don't know what I'm doing. So that's fun. So here we go. Let's put some, uh, let me get some yellow. Maybe yellow ochre too. Throw some yellow in first. Let's throw some yellow right here. We'll work some of this back. Throw some yellow. A little hair on the thing, of course. Yellow ochre. Oh, yeah. some, like nice golden, golden yellow right there. Just right blending a few yellows. That's right. That's all I'm doing right now. Just so it has a little bit of a change in the degree. Just like that. I'm gonna get some bright red. Just a hair of bright red. Throw that out here. Not a lot. I don't want to light the sky on fire. I just want to give it a little bit of, a little bit of a difference. So it's not just yellow. Get to a couple different tonalities up in here. A little bit more bright yellow right there. Same thing right, right here. And it'll mix with everything because I'm not not making sure I'm easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm kind of just letting everything kind of just mix together and have fun. A little bit of crimson now up in this corner. There we go. Blend it right down. And it'll continuously mix with the liquid white that's underneath it. And it'll constantly and constantly get lighter and lighter in value. Okay. Of the brush strokes, blend it out nice and easy. You kind of want to get it where it's just a, even though it's a menagerie of colors, you don't want to know where one color stops and the other one starts. Kind of blend it together, nice and easy. Just to make, maybe we can even just take a little bit of crimson right here, tap a little bit right down through here, streaks of it, and just blend it out. You can add a little bit more yellow wherever you'd like. Just in case if you see any spot that you'd like to get a little bit brighter. But pretty much, we just want a simple, a simple little sky. Just to start off with, no big deal. With painting, it's all about just what you're gonna paint. What you're doing, what's going on. And the easiest thing you can do just to start a painting is just have an idea of time of day, time of season. And then just go to town from there. Don't really care about what's going on after that. I'm going to tap some of this little brown color I made that I put on this. I'm probably just going to start working around here. Building it. Building it off little, little bushes and things that you can see in the distance. This is this light color that we're going to put on top. And we're going to start building depth in the painting. All right. And if you have these little hazy spots, try not to break them up because they give the illusion of depth. We're going to add a little bit of here, a little bit of there, so not too worried about it. Here's a little bit of a, probably want just, oof, that's a nice little push I just made right there. That is nice. things here and here. I want a little bush that lives right there. And a tree that kind of, you can see the tree. Right about there. Let me see a little tree. 
And then again, this is this um, Walmart. This is this Walmart brand, so again, there's a little bit of a like a loose crease in the center there, so gotta work around that. No big deal. Just gonna work in some darker bushes around here, trying to get the lay of the land started. Pretty much just like that. Working around this little misty area. Smacking all over some of these some of those dark spots. I'm smacking some darker color. Yeah, something like that. No big deal. Just making the slightest indications of some background bushes that's going to sit in that light. Go right into a little bit of paint thinner and into that brown color that we made. And all we can just do now is zip in some branches and some twigs and sticks that kind of live back here in the trees. And make sure we give these some of these trees little little branches to stand on so they don't just fall over. Little branches. See little things way in the background. So when you're running out of paint, you can always just zip little little ideas and little thoughts of sticks and twigs in the background of some of these. Not going to be as dark as that first strip you put on. But that's good. It works for you. Well, it's, I think the change of season is coming because I have the heater on still and it's pretty hot in this kitchen. This flannel doesn't help either, but... I started wearing these flannels during these painting classes and I just haven't, haven't came to the idea of stopping that yet. People seem to like it. One right here. Little branches, little things, little sticks, little twigs. Sometimes putting these little sticks and twigs on takes the most time. I always have to think, okay, where's that little next guy at? Where's he at? We're going to put a little bit more on later, but we're going to have a little bit of a different style for that one. So clean this brush off, set it down. Okay. Let's go back into that little one inch brush that we had. Let's pull a little bit of the different yellows and stuff through there. Just mix all the different yellows together. Tap, 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 tap. Tap those yellows together. Let's come over here and just touch. If you need a little bit more paint, get a little bit more paint. If it's not sticking, add the least, least touch of paint thinner. The golden rule with this is a thick paint will stick to a thin paint. Or a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. However you want to say it. Right. Touch red on this one. Let's come up. Ooh, that's nice. Ooh, nice little bush right there. I'm gonna make another one right here. Don't kill all these little things that you have way back here, because that. They're back there. Don't cover them up. Just give them a little, little highlight. You don't, things that are further and further and further away from you shouldn't get as much highlight because they're further away. So it, if you do that, it'll ruin that illusion of distance in your painting. Okay. Pick the first thing that's, that you can, is in the background and start working forward slowly but surely. I'm going to have to put some more. I think I like that red right now. Look at that red. That's nice. Paint's getting a little thin. It's getting pretty thin on the paint right now. There you go. You can 
rotate, turn it sideways. A little sideways action. Tap in a little, little things like this too. Work it all the way up. Same thing here. I'm gonna jump in this little crimson for a second. I'm gonna mix up the paint a little bit. Mix up the colors. So it's not just one color we're just putting on over and over again. Put a different layer in there. Slightly different colored layer. Tap it in. Just touch. And it'll constantly mix with the paint that's underneath the canvas that you put on, that brown. So automatically it'll get darker and darker and darker in value. If you really want to highlight it too, put a little bit of liquid white on your brush. So you can get a little bit brighter, brighter hues now again, or just white rather. And then right here you can sparkle that up. So, ooh, nice. So it's a little bit brighter right there, like the sun's hitting it. Don't do it too much though, because it'll lose the effectiveness then. things. There we go. There we go. Now we have a nice little little background going on right there. Now we can start building on top of that. So let's clean this brush off. Beat the little devil out of it. Come over here. Zoom in really quick before I, do, before I forget. So zoom right here. Okay. What are we going to do? I'll tell you. First things first, let's go crazy. Let's make some big bushes. Big trees, rather. Oh, I just kind of want to make a couple right there real quick. So, I'm just working my filbert brush around in my hand. A little stiff. Calm down. Stiff. All right. I think I'm going to use a... I don't have any of the brush around. I have all my brushes just laying around. So, I just grab what I want when I need it. Let's go through some browns. Different little mixtures of browns. I don't want too dark. Maybe a little black. Mixtures of browns. Let's go through one of these layers of, of yellows though, just on one side. Just as a, a little highlight. So I'm going to make a little bit of a tree right there. A little bit more brown. Again, go through those little highlight bush tones that we have. Make another one right there. Make one right here too. That lives right there. There. Little trees. Make little doers. It doesn't matter. Trees live, they grow any way they want. You can make them. It's right there. forest going right there. <laughs> right here. There's one right there. There's one right here. Yeah. Just an idea. Just some ideas of the trees that kind of just hang out back there. No big deal. Clean that brush off. Ooh. I'm going to take that little liner brush again. I'm going to throw that just into a little bit of this brown color that we mixed up before. I'm going to do right here. So I'm just going to find these little dooters, give them a top. Work a nice little top onto some of these things if they don't have one. Just want to work some. These are old, I don't know, just kind of think they're old dead pine trees. Ones that have the little spikes that stick off. Some are long, some are just little choo, choo, choo. To make little noises if it helps. Helps me sometimes. Just little things that kind of stick off. Choo, choo. Little straight dead branches that kind of just zip. 
zip off the sides a little bit. Sometimes there's little long ones that kind of stick out. They didn't break off yet, they're still kind of alive, but little, little things in the eye. Some of them you can't even see. Let's go to the side. There. There. Little one up. Just give them little, little side shots. Make little, little branches that stick off them. Uh, no. Probably gonna put some bushes, little leaves over some of these. So no big deal. Uh, there's a big one. Uh, and if you can. If the bushes or the trees are near each other, you can actually come over the one with the other. And that just helps give it the illusion of distance. Uh, these are way back in the dark, so we won't see a lot of those. There you go. I want to make one right here. Take a little bit of that brown. I'm going to pull it through a little bit of this yellowish white that we have going on. So there's brown on one side, white on the other. And I want to just near, come in here, make one or two little other trees that kind of just follow that. And then with the yellow, you can kind of give them the highlight at the same time. A little sneaky, a little lazy way to paint. And I am a lazy guy, so I want easy things. Nice and easy. There's another one that goes just like that. And we got a little little tree. He's not a big guy. There's that one, but yeah, let's give him an arm. Run that through, run that through. Oop, there it is. Yeah, give him an arm. There's an arm, there's another arm. Build him up a bit. And every layer you put in, a little highlight layer and stuff, it'll all give the illusion of distance in your painting. So, you can put a little bit of that yellow down some of these trees too. So just run. If you see anything that needs a highlight, just come down here. Throw yourself in a little bit more of a highlight. Just in case you want to highlight some of these trees. You know, one that lives way back here in the woods. There. Something like that. Just like that. Okay. Got a little forest going on now. Good. All right, before we go too crazy, better throw some leaves on these things. I want to get a little bit of a darker style now. So I'll add a little bit more black when I'm mixing it with this. I'll add a little bit more of the black to the um, different dark colors we have, the browns that we're mixing together. Now we can start actually walking around some dark, dark woods gonna sit way over here. Push all this stuff back. Just tap push up. If you really load your brush up good with paint, you should have a lot of paint on the brush. And if you do that, you can just push up a bunch of different bushes, sticks and twigs, and it'll push everything back that you already just put on there because it's nice and dark, 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 dark. Here. Don't cover everything up, but I like to cover, I like to play back and forth with different colors. You just push a little dark, oh look at that big bush, let's throw that bush right there. Right there, push, push all that back. Dark, I mean this is just straight black I'm using now, I just threw a bunch of straight black right onto the brush. I just threw a bunch of straight black onto the brush. I just really wanted to push that whole scene. Throw a dark color in there, no big deal. Hold on. There, just push that whole scene white right back there into the distance. Perfect. Okay. Beat the devil out of it. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. A little bit lighter on this side and then it kind of gets darker and darker and darker as it kind of goes away. Good. <coughs> I'm sick too, man flu. This one's going to take a little bit longer, but that's alright. 
I'm gonna go some some yellows, reds, and get some of that kind of thinner paint we had going on here. Tap in there, pull it out. I think whatever. Kill all that dark though. Let some of that dark kind of hang around, like the tops of it. It's a nice little separator. Hmm. This little booger went to market. Just loading some paint up. Making little layers. The bush was way, way over there. Here, I actually had to thin down the paint a little bit, which is different. I'm always trying to use different new styles, different new paints and stuff. And sometimes, sometimes these things are just a little bit. Ooh, that's nice. Sometimes they're a little funky. Different styles you're painting with, different paint companies, all different kind of things you have to you gotta work around. So you gotta know every painting can't be a winner right off the bat. You kinda have to figure out what you're doing, what you're working with. And hopefully you can learn a little bit yourself just by watching me kinda, you know, work out my new painting techniques and what I'm what I'm using. So far I went through what was it? So far I went through, hmm. Probably there's a big bush. I just want to put. Ooh, nice. Leave these dark areas between here. Don't kill them all. Let them get nice and dark. Again, that's your separator. Layers and layers and layers. Went through three different oil company or oil companies so far. Oil companies, um, paint companies, and they're all different. They are all absolutely different. What you want to try to do is you want to just tap. You don't want to hammer it home. You just want to kind of tap these in. And you don't want to let your brush slide. It's not always the easiest thing. I'd be like, here, don't let your brush slide. But it, it has, it can be hard. You just kind of, kind of jump in there, tap it. The harder you press, the more chances your, your brush will slide and you'll have mud mixing happen. So we don't want that, but. And the more you tap on something, the darker and darker and darker it will become. Because again, it's always constantly mixing with the oil that is already on here. Right now I'm going to throw some dark color on here. Build, build up a layer of some dark, dark color right now. We're getting a further and further away from the sun. So now we're getting mistier and mistier and mistier down here. Probably, I'm seeing a tree. I'm seeing a tree, I'm seeing a tree, I'm seeing a tree. All these dark colors, mixing them together. What do we got? We got some time here. Big tree. Right there. See a big tree. Right there. Good thing I don't have a mean old director to yell at me like Bob Ross does. Otherwise, I'd be screwed. There's, a, uh, there's another tree right there. Oh, probably another one right here. I'm thinking a lot of just dark color on the brush. Dark, dark color. There you go, just like that. Mm -hmm. I like these these kind of nighttime dark forest paintings. A lot of different atmosphere you can have with all these different little things. Right now we got some dark color on the brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right over here, just like this. I'm going to start rubbing. 
I'm gonna start rubbing one off. <laughs> I just said that out loud. I'm gonna start rubbing right here. Get a little crazier and crazier and crazier. Just like that. I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna take some burnt sienna. It's a lighter brown. And I'm just gonna start. I just wanna kinda go through here. Just like that. And go through the whites. Highlight some of this stuff, whites and yellows. We're just gonna just softly, softly, softly glide the brush just like that. All we're doing is making a little, little path, a little forest path. Perfect. All right. If you see anything. Take like some of these dark colors of different reds, crimsons, even a little bit of brown. Mix them all together. Come up here and just touch, slightly push up. And what you can do is you can set the path right down into the painting. I love these nice reds. Really, really like making these these types of paintings in a nice little different muted red tones. I just think it really, 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 really works well. See that? Beautiful. You can just push, push up. You can make layer and layer with a tiny little fan brush. You can make all these layers. Sit that little little brush down. I'm just gonna, I think I might just continue that. Just wanna keep slapping some more paint right on here. Continue that. Just using this little tiny brush. You don't always have to use big, big brushes, but you can. You can. All right. Clean that little brush off. Let's go back to our big old brush. Crimson, yellows, all the colors. Mix them all together. Come right up here. Start plopping in some of the foreground areas, little bushes. Sit some of these trees in. Down into the painting. There, it's nice. There, you already have you already have the the dark color already there, so that's nice. So you can just come right in here and push some great, nice looking bushes right in the foreground here without worrying about the shadow colors already already in there for you. That's why I like doing this kind of style because it's so easy to paint. A lot of this stuff is already done for you. So then you're just kind of working around what's already there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a, a highlight some of the things right here. Just want to slightly different, oh, nice, nice little pink tones. bushes now again. It's beautiful. It's very, I don't know how to describe it. I think it looks a little bit more like a, some more of the traditional oil style paintings I've seen when you use this kind of, when you work around these thin styles of paint. Because it's really, really hard to get a properly thick paint like you used to be able to get. So working around with what you have is kind of essential and when you get really thin paint though you want to start just you just want to start touching you don't want to really push hard it might sound like I'm pushing hard but you don't want to push hard because you don't want to smear that brush you don't want to you don't want to move the brush slide it that's the word I was looking for. You want to slide the brush. Just move this, move this. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's it. Almost towards the end now. Something. Ooh, let's walk that all the way in the path.
Nice. Okay. So here we go. We got 30 minutes. Already, already out of time, folks. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry about that. But right now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of that thin paint, a little bit of the thick paint, mix it together a little bit. Browns, reds, and that thin paint. Cut it so it's a little marbled. I just want to slightly, slowly, slowly kind of just walk it down some of these trees right here. Alright, so we'll just cut it, cut it off. Nice little roll of paint right there at the edge of the knife. And just without even put pressure on, just walk it down. Just like that. We're just gonna add we're just adding a little bit of extra how do you say a little bark to these trees. Dark color. Just down here, slide the cut dark color down too. Excuse my reach. I have to get where I have to get is in the way a little bit. Dark color. Dark color. Do, 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 do. And you're just running it right down the side of the tree. Just like that. Dark on one, right on one side, dark on the other. Gives it that roundness that it needs. And when it dries, of course, you'll have bark that you can actually feel, which is always fun. Okay. Let's get some really crazy highlights on this. Let's really highlight this one. Yeah. Same thing with this one. Let's give it a real nice highlight. Look at these trees really. Is it this one down? Right down, right through here. Oh. Nice highlight. Right on that one. A little bit more red. Like I said, I'm I'm a really huge fan of these red tones in these these specific paintings. I just think they look really nice. Look at that brown that we made right down the center. Take that. And you're just adding layer and layer of paint. So when this dries, you'll actually be able to feel the bark that's underneath it. Now you can take it like this, make this motion, or you can just slide right down. Either either works. Either works. I am not left-handed, so this is not going to work out well. There. Okay. There we go. I am not left-handed, so... Up. And I can throw some black in here. Throw some dark color right off this. Throw this. Dark color. Run it right down the center again. Okay. Clean that off. Anymore. All right, now we have some big old trees right there. Okay, take your little liner brush. I guess I should have did this first, but I really don't care. Tap in a bunch of crimson, and this is how I usually like to do this. Really dark colors, crimson. If you need a little hint. Of paint thinner just to get it to stick, throw it in there. Brown, crimsons, just tap a little bit of these crimson kind of tones. Yep, just crap, tap these little like dark, dark crimson tones right into these leaves just to kind of finish them off. 
I want to, because I just love this like really, really dark, distant feel when you do these paintings right. Of course, the more layers you're going to put over these trees, it'll push these trees back, back into the distance, back into the darkness. Just like that. Yeah, there. Okay. There, see? No, that's good. Now all we got to do, I'll put a couple different branches on there. Clean that up. And the whole time, it's easier, it's a little bit quicker and more um, time friendly if you're if you're not cleaning your brushes every time. But actually, this time I've actually been cleaning my brush as I go, which I know hindered me a little bit, but uh, excuse me, it was burped. That was rude. Coffee. Blame it on the Joe. Okay, scraping some of this really thin paint around. Get a place to work around. So clean that up. Get your liner brush out. A little bit of a, just go right into a black. Real dark. Dark, 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 dark. Okay. Same thing. Take that black through this little liner, this little white color that we have here. And all you do is take it either way. Go that way. Or you can go this way. It's all how it works for you. Just like that. Like I said, these. You, if you have a little jiggle to you, you actually, you're ahead of the game. Make these nice little branches that just kind of come out of nowhere. Little sticks and things that can zip off these trees. The only thing I, I could do, that I like to do anyway, didn't do in this painting, is I like to put little rocks and stuff in there too. I didn't do that, but I think they're really pretty. Working these around, coming in front of what's already there, and helping to push it behind. And the highlight helps you follow it to where it's supposed to go. Just like that. that tree's done. Well, those two trees, I mean. Okay, let's see what's going to go on with these ones. Excuse me, I'm in your way. Okay, so this one has like a lot of those. I'm gonna make one with a lot of those little sticks kind of just hanging off of it. So yeah, got the little highlight on the. We got the dark color on the bottom. We got the highlight on the top. Make a flick, just flick, flick, flick. From the sides, from the middle, they don't all just grow on one side, so make sure you, you can flick these off all different sides of the tree. Just like that. Just like that, beautiful. See anything else you want to add to this one to give it a little bit of character? Maybe push this one in front of that little bush that we made earlier. There you go, that's good. Here's a little uh, off this little duder. I didn't see it first, but there he is now. There you go, beautiful. Just like that. All right. Okay. Okay, everything's cleaned up, everything's ready to go for the next painting, except for the palette needs clean, but other than that, we're good. Now, if you wanted to, since we do have, I guess, unlimited time, I guess you want to say, because 
my damn channel. But if you wanted to take, I'll just show you. I'll tell you instead of showing you, I guess. But if you want to take a little, um, I can even show you with these. Cheaper brush, same, uh, same kind of concept. Brush like this with flat sides, with a nice thick middle. Coat it with a nice coat of dark color, thinner dark color. Slide it through one side of that light color, and then just whoop, whoop, whoop. You've seen it me do it before. You know, I don't have any light color ready, but I can make light color ready in just a second. Because why not? Maybe I'll do something to kind of lighten that path up just a bit and show you what I'm talking about. But I'd rather just show you what I'm talking about than tell you what I'm talking about. Okay, get that dark color on the brush, both sides. Run it through this light color. Alright, run it through the light color. And right here you can just make little... stones that kind of live all over the place. They don't care where they live. They just hang out here maybe up in the bushes. I think these little dead spots, little stones. They live all over this little path. There's a big one right there. There's a brother. There's a big one right here. There's another one. Just like that. Just like that. Okay, little stones are going to hang out here. Love life. Little, here they are. A little dude right here. Okay. That's how you make lots of little stones. Live in your world. Just like that. There. Clean that brush off. And we're good. I went a little further, but that's okay. I need to really start explaining things. I want to make sure I get everything kind of explained correctly. Take my time with things. Uh, hopefully I'm going to start teaching some painting classes here this year at wineries and stuff. I'm not saying I'm having it for sure right now, but that's in the works right now. So right now, I'm saying right now a lot. This has been Paul from P.A. Brunos with Painting with P.A. Brunos, episode 24, 25, I do believe. Hope you enjoyed it. I went a little long. I don't usually like to go over 30 minutes, but hey, it is what it is, and it's, it's like 4.30 in the morning, so give me a break. <laughs> anyway, see you in the next time. Cheers. Bye-bye. Watch that finger. Wow.